Hello and welcome back to The Mum Show. I am joined once again by Claire and Emma for some more practical, biblical and therapeutic wisdom. So grab yourselves a cup of tea, make yourselves comfortable and let's get started. To another episode of The Mum Show. My name is Marina, I am your host and I am joined once again by Pastor Claire Hooper and child therapist Emma Brown. Now you may have heard the phrase battered around, in the world, not of the world. And this refers to scriptures by Jesus and later Paul who refers to not conforming to the things of this world. But what does this mean as parents? Are we supposed to be isolating our children? Should we be tooling them up for a fight? That's what we're going to be exploring today. Mm. There we go. I guess I think we should start this by establishing what we think mm. that means. Big mm. question. It is a big question. It's a good one for yeah. us to explore, I think. I think I feel like the, the term, the phrase, mm. if you like, can have some really big implications on mm. our parenting and, and on the way yeah. we view things for our kids, view opportunities for mm. our kids and things like that. So I think it's worth having a discussion about. But... What would you say, Claire? What, what do you think that, that kind of turn of phrase means in, in the context of where those scriptures are found? I think it's giving your children the confidence, especially when you're helping them grow in their faith, giving them confidence to reach for the things that maybe are slightly countercultural to the, to the normal things they're bumping into that become normal. Not that culturally we shouldn't be involved. I do absolutely love some of the... <sighs> I don't know the times, the life and times that we live in, you know, the social part of what we live in, the technical part of what we live in, the, the resources that are available to our children. But there's just some attitudes and approaches to life that are just not godly culture. And I think that's what Jesus is saying and that's what the writers later on in the Word of God are saying, that actually although there is lots of you around you, you're in a world and this is the world that you're in. But you're not, your mindset is not of that world. Your mindset is of a kingdom, we call it like that, a kingdom culture, you know, a God culture, a, a God um, a God aware culture and to build that into your children. I think that's probably what I would yeah. understand from it. What would yeah. you say Emma? I think I think my experience growing up um, in, in a certain way, in a certain Christian mm. um, uh, I, you know, both my parents were Christians, we went to church um, and I felt that that it, looking looking at this now, I'm a parent, and looking at the ways that I want to do things in a similar way to my parents, and looking about how how I want to kind of have a slightly different way of doing things, I see it a bit more like a continuum because I see it at the one end there's there's maybe this kind of school of thought of, of of Christ against culture, so kind of that idea of Christ being so separate from the the kind of secular cultural environment we live in that we have to as Christians separate ourselves somehow mm. from that. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the kind of Christ, you know, in culture. So, you know, a, a sense of everything goes, everything's permissive. Mm. And actually what I, what my feeling is when I've explored this myself is about actually Christ being a transformer of culture. Mm. And how do we be in the world fully and, and, mm. and help to be part of that you know, transformation of the culture that we live yeah. in. You know, be yeah. a take a real proactive stance mm. towards it, I guess. Yeah, I love that. When you, when you actually look at, when the word world is used in the New Testament, it refers to the Greek translation of cosmos. Mm. And what that is referring to is the, is the earth and its people under the curse, under the curse of the fall, under Satan's rule, if you like. And so to not be in that world or to not be of that world whilst you're li living in yeah, totally. and you're inhabiting, to not be, in, to not be of that world mm. means that you are not product of a curse, you are not bound to a t curse, mm -hmm. you're not under the chains of a curse, but actually you are completely free to live out your kingdom culture. You are completely free mm. to live in all the freedom that Christ brings you and all the incredible opportunity that that brings you and to carry about you the power and the authority mm. of the Holy Spirit, mm. which I think can kind of, it, it turns, for me, it turns things around to a very positive and empowering point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And it becomes less about 
where can we shrink and hide to? Mm. And so much more about, wow, I've got this authority, I've got this access to everything. Mm. How can I use that in what we're what we're walking into and, and where we're living. Definitely for raising children as well. You know, you send them into school, you send them into clubs, you send them out into the town or, you know, out into this world that is on the internet. And if you're teaching them and training them and coaching them in a cultural mindset, yeah. when they bump into things that are countercultural, they'll know what to do with it. When you go to a bank, they don't teach bank tellers how to look for forged notes. Mm -hmm. They teach them how to look for the right. They teach them what a real note looks like and that's what they're trained on so then when a counterfeit comes along yeah they know what a counterfeit looks like I so love they, that. they teach so them to good. feel it to look it to see it yeah, they they school really them in what is the truth yeah. and then when they see something counterfeit they know what to do with it and I think that that is a much more positive pro productive way of raising our kids into faith as they grow older to teach them what the truth is what the truth that what we believe in yeah. uh, it forces us to think about that it forces yeah. us to know our bible forces us to know what we believe forces us to know what we struggle with what we you know what we're bumping up against what we think about things that we're, we're bumping up against in life as well yeah it all comes back all the time to that kingdom identity yeah it all comes back to knowing what it is to be a child of God who yes. that makes you yeah. and what kind of responsibility and opportunities that gives you for for being a transformer of culture um, absolutely <laughs> to use your phrase Emma yeah. but it, you love that phrase <laughs> We're going to write that one down for you. It's a good one. But there's, there's so much, isn't it, for kids are not in the same culture either today. There's so much that they are yeah. facing them. We've explored in other episodes with teenagers. We've seen some of the impacts that face them. And so we also need to be really realistic mm -hmm. that actually it's, you, we, we need to prepare them to be super strong because mm -hmm. we're not perhaps talking about life that it was like 15 or 20 yeah. years ago. I mean, when I was in my Christian teens it was the 90s and everyone was whooping and it was all wonderful and yeah. you know there, there's su such a new generation that they're in now that actually for parents to school their kids in this way yeah. we really need to get up with what the world does look like and Absolutely. what is out there yeah. But I, I, and I, I just think that, you know, God, God created culture, you know, God created the whole Genesis story was that he created everything first that allowed us to have our, to, to develop the world. And, you know, he gave us all the resources that we would ever, ever need. And then he created human beings. Mm -hmm. So God, you know, God's not against culture. God yeah, loves absolutely. culture. He created it for us. Um, and I think that's something really important you, for us to remember. You that. taught me once about the mirror neurons. Yeah. And I think, I think mirroring is essential in building culture. So it'd be great in a minute if you could share how that works because to build culture, you have to model something. Yeah. And so when we model to our children what it's like to live as a believer, to live in the world that we live in, but to live at peace in the world that we live in, um, and to live in a strength and a courage with what we believe, live in, you need you need an easy mode to get there. And I think mirroring yeah. the way God's done that helps you when you send somebody out to build a culture somewhere, it's because they say, it's gonna be like this, it's gonna look like this, it's gonna feel like this, it's gonna taste like this, it's gonna be this environment. And that's, and that's done, but God made it so that we can mirror that from each other, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think you're right to bring in the mirror neurons thing. You know, it's yeah. one of my favourite topics because, yeah. you know, it's all about empathy, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about, you know, we, we've discovered now um, it, the, the kind of advances in neuroscience has helped us realise that there are parts in the brain that are responsible for developing empathy. And we know this because we've, we've you know, we've seen, um, for instance, um, you know, when, when somebody um, bites an apple in front of you, the other person can actually have the same physiological response to biting mm. that apple. So your mouth might water or you might almost taste it even though you've physically not got the apple. It's those mirror neurons that are connecting to the other person's mirror neurons and giving you that same sense of feeling felt by that person. Mm. So, and we've said before on the Mum Show, I think probably even last, last season, about how we as parents are the, fe we, we are the first port of call we're the first reference point to God for our children. Yeah, God, you know, our children learn yeah, and have a relationship true. with God through their relationship mm. and connection that they have with us. So mm. we are, we, it is, it's down to us, isn't it, I'm afraid. Yes, the responsibility true. lies with us. It always real. comes back to us. To, but, but we have but to yeah, We can't it. just shove them out there. <laughs> Go on, out into the world. You know, like, so we you'll, really be know you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But don't you think, though, that just goes to show how important it is that we chat about this subject? Because Absolutely. if we are in a place of dread and fear mm. and, mm. and worry, then our kids are going to start to yeah. feel that anxiety and that panic when they're 
in that opportunity. Whereas if we, we oh, yeah. send them in a place of confidence and boldness yeah, and certainty, yeah. then they can take that with them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Shall we hear from some of the kids yes. that are living in this world? Let's do it. Let's Love listen to our children. Love Joy Kids Action! Can you tell us how long you've been a Christian and why your faith is important to you? So I've been a Christian now for four years and it's so important to me because of how, how it changes your whole life. And like there's so many things that I've gone through and there's so many places that I've been in that it's been in dark places. Whereas now I'm, it's changed and I fully contrast to where I am right now and just be the best me that I am. And that's what Jesus does with my life. Faith means a lot to me and that Jesus makes life happier and that I wouldn't be who I am and how I go through life every single day without knowing that God's with me or Jesus is with me. Whoever finds that um, there are things that are acceptable amongst your uh, non-Christian, your atheist agnostic friends that, don't, that are not acceptable for you as a Christian? Yeah, so a lot of people in my school will go out and party and go drinking and uh, a lot of people who go out get drunk and there's a few people that have had sex in my year and have gone out and smoked weed and stuff like that and there's them, them people I try to stay away from and them people I don't want to hang out with because I feel like if you're around a bad influence and you're around that you can almost drift towards it. Um, a lot of people swear in my ear and it's hard not to go near them people because we've got such a small class that a lot of people try and make friends with you. Um, I just try to walk away and not listen to what they're saying because I don't want it to reflect on my behaviour. So in the Bible it says that we're to be in the world not of the world. <coughs> what do you think that scripture means? So we, if we are in the world and not of the world, so like we follow the, what God's told us to do. So like it, like it says in the Bible, to be more like Jesus. We need to be more like Jesus. We need to follow be, and be more like Him, whereas we don't follow other people. The majority of the people don't believe there's a God or a Jesus. And they believe that we just come from anything that could happen. And they don't find it comfortable like if it was to talk about God or Jesus or anything like that. If you're a woman or a man of God, you lead people in the right direction. You can be that one person where you stand out and you are that person who, for example, there's a person who no one talks to, there's a person who no one really likes. You go up to that person and speak to that person and you go and show other people where no one's isolated, no one's different to each other, we're all equal. How do you approach a subject with somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus? When I approach someone who doesn't believe in Jesus and they have no clue who Jesus is, I try to make them more comfortable. So, and I always start off by sharing what he's done in my life and like what he can do in your life and how he can move in your life. Because if they see what he's done in my life, because a lot of my friends before saw how I was and they see how I am now and they see the difference. So I was able to tell them what it's like for me to change and what's changed in my life and how Jesus has changed my life. Why is heads? Amazing. Do we need to go any further? <laughs> I mean, they say so much, well, don't uh, they? We just <laughs> should let them they? take over, really, shouldn't we? It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it, when you hear from yeah. them. One of the things that, like, the, the kind of struggle that I picked up on, I think, was the, the difficulty of being, uh, you know, it's uncomfortable for people to hear about my faith. I don't want to necessarily impose this. I, and how do I straddle this fine line of, I want to be a good witness, but I also want to be accepted. Absolutely. But also I don't want to be influenced yeah. and yeah. them kind of also feeling vulnerable in that sense. How do you think parents can lovingly help their kids navigate that? I, I think talk about it, talk, acknowledge the, the conflict for them because actually, you know, you know, I know we're, we're going to have a, an episode on, on, the te on the teenage brain and things like that, but I think it's so important that young people help to, to, to kind of make sense of what's going on internally for them. And it's a huge time of turmoil for them anyway, that kind of inner conflict of desperately wanting to be accepted, that real drive to want to feel, you know, a, a belonging in their peer group. 
but at the same time having these kind of really core beliefs. Mm. Um, and, and actually what came across to me from those two was actually the importance of having a relationship with God. Yeah. Having a, a, an absolute, intimate, personal, real relationship with God. That's the bit that kind of uh, can mm. make all the difference in terms of you know knowing that God is with me. Yes, this situation is really tricky. I'm in a I'm in a you know in a, in, a, in a friendship group where there's people swearing, where I'm getting offered weed, I'm getting pressured to go to parties, mm. but God is with me and God is my strength and and yeah. you know that 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 I think that's the crux of it really, isn't it? Yeah. Is, is how do we help our children develop and encourage them to have that relationship yeah. with God? And I think we need to not be frightened yeah. to talk about those things. Absolutely. Having those conversations with them. Yeah. After all, we're not giving them something bad. We're not trying to entice them into weed or drugs. We want <laughs> them to have a relationship with a living God who's good and always good. You can look at the Christian life as a rule a list of do's and don'ts. And God doesn't ask us to reflect him so that he makes him better. He asks us to reflect him and his character so that it makes us better, so the world around us is better. Because yeah. when we can model good, godly characteristics to the world, it just makes the world a better place. Yeah. It, and, and when we model that to our children and we teach our children to, to do that, it enhances their, their relational walk, their like life and work, their, their creativity, the kind of person that they are. And then when they, then when they model that to other people and then to their children, mm. it just makes the world a better place. And it's not a list of do's and don'ts so that God can be sitting in heaven, mm. this, some, you know, wagging his finger down mm. at us. There's a culture that's at work that Jesus talks about because it helps us to, it helps actually to lift us up and give us mm. a courage and a confidence to live. And so what, what we give our children by saying to them, you're in this world, absolutely. You're going to walk alongside some really difficult situations, some tricky situations. You're going to bump into things that you never thought you would. People are going to ask you to do things you never thought they would. You're going to say things that you never thought you would. You're going to choose to do things that you never thought you would. What what, what can we give you that's a better option than that? What can you reach for that's a better option than that? And that's where these, I've got this, that I'd love to talk about the four faces. Yeah, can go. I talk about yeah, that yeah, now? Yeah, of course, go for it. In, there's two times in the Bible that it talks about God having four faces. And I love to use it in my family. It's something that me and my husband, Matt, have looked at and thought, how can we add that into family life? I don't know if, I, if anybody else thinks of it like this, but I do, so go with it. It talks about God having four faces, the face of an ox, the face of a, um, an eagle, the face of a lion and the face of a man. Mm. And the ox is, is, it represents working hard, that God is a hard working God and he wants us as well to live our lives in service to each other and to others. And then there's the face of the lion, which is to live in courage, to live courageously, to be mm. bold in the life that we've got and to reach for that and to have confidence to do things that maybe you never thought you would. And then to to have to teach our children to live with vision, which is the eagle, to be able to live with vision that goes out into the future and not just sit in the moment with what's going on, but the choices that you make. How do they impact your future, your day after your day after your day? And then the last one, which is my favourite, the face of God that we don't often see or talk about, is the human face, and that's the face of compassion. That is that we are compassionate and empathetic towards each other. And as we teach our children to grow in compassion towards one another, we lift that that burden of shame, which is another episode that we're going to cover yeah. at some point. You'll have to search that out. And which is being in yeah. the former world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Being under shame is being yeah. in, is conforming to the former things, isn't it? Yeah, and those four things, you know, teaching our children to live with those four things, to be courageous, to live hard work and to live with compassion and to live with vision, mm. I think teach them are some of the foundations of the Christian life that, again, are not about the do's and don'ts. Yeah. They're about the what could you, could you think like this? Why don't you reach far? There's something better. Yeah. This might be here and I'm right at the side of you, but you know if you, if you walk in that direction, it's a life that you could only ever dream about. I love that, Claire. I think that's so important, kind of, you know, and moves away from this thing of, you know, it's, it's sin. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I know, we, you know, we do, we don't, we don't need to be saved from culture. We need to be saved from sin. Mm. Of course we do. But there's a, but there's a kind of a, a ability mm. to kind of help our kids not just be scared of the consequences of mm. sinning. Yeah, Which is absolutely. often, you know, this huge thing that holds us back as Christians, I yeah. think, and actually makes us feel like when we do make a mistake, how do we come back from that? Yeah. Even though we get taught about forgiveness, there's yeah. something really difficult about the kind of mm. danger of sinning. 
where actually if we can give our children, like you say, something um, worth making that decision for, mm. you know, what, what, what are we teaching them about what could mm. be possible? You know, God wants, Jesus gave us life and life in abundance and, he, you know, he wanted us to have the most prosperous and um, fulfilling time mm. on this earth, didn't he? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think yes. I think what I really like about that as well is that actually it's it's coming from a place of grace, isn't it? Yeah. So if to be in the world and of the world is to actually be conformed to your sinful self and to, to live under that, then actually to be in a kingdom mindset is to be in a place of grace. Mm. And we need that with our kids because they aren't going to always make the right decision. And I love what you were saying about those four faces and about what we're aiming for, but there's going to be a lot of parents watching this that go, my goodness, I'm lucky if my kid talks to me in the morning at the moment, <laughs> yeah. let alone aiming yeah. for the best or going for something yeah. else. You know, and as parents, sometimes we can be like, we're going to go for this, but I can't get them to put their shoes on in the morning. You know, and like the practical side of life can be just so difficult at times. And as parents, it is reminding them, I think every time we show grace to our kids, every time we allow them yeah, to true. keep testing the water to keep treading carefully to walk that fine line without coming down with a a big stick or without coming down with a big you know whack of shame if you like actually we're showing them no 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 you're not of this world we don't do shame Mm. actually when you do things wrong don't get me wrong there's consequences and Mm. and we have to face that but at the same time we're not going to parent you from a place of shame we're not going to parent you from a place of you know don't do this and don't do that and condemnation actually we're parenting you from a place of freedom yeah. and, that, and it's more kind of helping you come back in Absolutely. when you mm. find yourself on the wrong side mm. if you like rather than hemming you in mm. and boxing you in mm. what what would you say to parents whose kids are at the moment in a particular place of anxiety of stress mm. trying to navigate this because these kids are awesome that we watch in the vt i absolutely love them but they are also you know they've walked through some difficulties and um the lad on there you know he himself has had a very real encounter that we'll get to learn more about in later on in the season but what, what would you say to those parents that are trying to support their kids mm. who at the moment are perhaps at a crossroads mm. They're wavering and they're not sure which way to turn. What advice would you give those parents? For me, it's always keep the lines of communication open. Yes. That's, that's the bottom line is, you know, there's no topic that should be off limits. Anything goes. Make yourself available, accessible mm. at any point in time. But I also think we need to acknowledge that actually for us as parents, we're sometimes not the best people to be having those conversations mm, with our young people about faith because I know for a fact that that my daughter really struggled with her faith and still is struggling with her faith and but but the the extra layer of that is that she doesn't want to hurt me mm, um, yeah. and although I can kind of you know be as empathic and accepting of her position as possible there's a real drive for her not to want to upset me yeah. so actually it's really important that she has other um, Christian adults, yeah. young adults yeah. that she can talk to and who can kind of give where she can really question and she can really, you know, go to town with what her, yeah. uh, where she's at right now and still ha- kind of have that, um, you know, empathic response without the threat of feeling like she's going to yeah. upset anybody. I think that's so, I think kind of getting other um, Christian adults around for our young people is really important. Yeah, Great that's wisdom. really good. What are you thinking, Claire? I'm just thinking of that scripture where um, Jesus talks about being salt and light. Mm. And um, in the message, it's got a great version of it. I recommend you read it if you can. And it talks about our job to bring out the God flavours and the God colours of the earth. And it's, again, the way he's made us and wired us. We are, what is it, something like 70% body language. The rest is, is you might know that fact. (laughs) It's It's high in it. It's a bit high. It's high. Our communication is way more body language than it is words. And I think sometimes as parents, because we don't always, because we want to give instruction and our children to be compliant, that's what we want. We sometimes use a lot of words and less action. Mm -hmm. And our body language or our, our... Actions say something different. And God says we're supposed to bring out the God colours and the God flavours of the earth. Wherever you live, whatever your circumstances. So if you've got a situation, I think you would go to work and you would know how to get the best out of the staff that you work with. You'd know how to make somebody laugh Mm. or smile or lighten the mood. Or sometimes you might be really good at the opposite thing and bring in the dark cloud (laughs) into the office. And that is as much set in our culture as is 
um, bringing something positive and I think you've just got to sometimes self-reflect a little bit look at what that means for you and if you have your family around you exactly as Emma said don't make it about um, berating them for the things that they do or don't believe or think about you've you, your modelling of what is good to you, what you believe is good, will be a great testimony to yeah. what you believe. Absolutely. And then you've learned trust and earn trust. And as they gain a certain age, they'll hopefully have that conversation with you and you'll be able to have a really good conversation about some... I've had some great conversations with my teenagers now. Mm. Some things that when they were kids, they just accepted. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's literally because I told you to do it. And I was like thinking, here we all are on the same page. Yeah. And now we're having a conversation. And I actually, do you know what? I prefer the stage of life they're at now where we're having that conversation. Because mm. it's forced me to think about exactly what I believe yeah. and about what I think about those situations and what I, what I think it live, means to live in this world, but live as a believer, yeah. as a follower of Jesus in, you know, 2018. What does that mean? And I love actually because we know that we're aiming for the heart and mind of Christ. And we're not, we're not there, yeah. are we? We're, we're yeah. moving towards that and we're constantly... Yeah. And actually, we don't need to attain that to get our salvation. No. Our salvation actually comes from receiving Christ and, and repentance. Yeah. And so the, the thing I find mind-blowing about that is if I then don't allow my children to explore and to question yeah. and to think and to get to that place, then I'm actually not showing them the same levels of grace. You know, so we've kind of got to allow them, haven't we? Yeah. To, to, to challenge us and explore that. And that writing about the mind of Christ isn't about me either, it's about the we. Yeah. Which is why, again, it's about culture, is about the we. Like about, and that's why we all need to look at how we reflect Jesus. Because if we want to build it, we can't just hope that a podcast might do it, or a youth camp might do it, or yeah. a Christian meeting, or if we get them to listen to this piece of music. We have to get them in an environment where we know that there's going to be that culture, yeah. and so they can look at it and make an educated decision. Because... I'm telling you, if you get your kids in a good church around good people, mm. they're going to want to be a part yeah. of it because it's good. See, what you're saying then I'm is simple. to... I have a simple approach to these things, I <laughs> no, know. No, but I, I think it's true, though. It's, there's a lot of putting a good kingdom culture in the home yeah. where we've got the values that you're talking about. But also, I think, I mean, I know when... I, I never went off and explored other avenues. And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that I had so much fun yeah. Like I had such a fun youth group, I had such a fun yeah. church and um, when youth had kind of declined and everyone was scared to touch us or anything, do you know what my parents did? They became the youth leaders. I love that. And they were like, fine, we'll run the youth and um, <laughs> they took us, I think we had about 14 to begin with and by the end of it there was over 100 youth and so many of those now are church leaders and I often think to myself, I'm just so grateful that they jumped in and went, do you know what? We're not going to just leave you to have nothing. We're not going to just expect you to be on your own in this. We'll jump in and we'll do it ourselves. And, um, yeah, I hope I can Great. be that proactive. Mm, Thank you, guys. Too. I have loved chatting to you about that. Anyway, I do hope that you have got something from this discussion as well. If you want to find out any more, then please do head over to our website at promisecollective.co.uk. And we will be back with The Mum Show. More episodes very soon. Be blessed. Don't forget to say hello. We're at promisecollective.co.uk. Bye!